this video I'm just going to clear up some confusion about functions and show the real value of functions, right? So in the last video I showed you how to make a function like this. So we'll have a function that's called, it, I don't know, return, oops, oh yeah, yeah, it doesn't really matter, return number function. It doesn't really matter what number, just make a number up. And, you know, we want to return an integer obviously and so let's just say that we return the number I don't know 77 right okay fine not a problem well as I demonstrated I could use that number in a variable return number like this and then I can print that variable if I want just to confirm that that value has been added to that variable right and what this shows is just that I can you know, use a data type um, from a function, right? But a lot of you might have been thinking, or you may be thinking now, why bother with this function? Because really, all I have to do to use this number is say variable c equals 77. Even, you know, any kind of function that I can make just with an integer return type, so far, you know, I could just figure out the maths, get the end number and just put it into a variable and there'd be no difference between using a function and a variable so why why bother using the function you might think okay well you haven't seen the true value yet of a uh, function right so you can actually make a variable so let's say we call it variable d and we'll say d is equal to 99 right and then we can actually use this variable in here Right, I'll show you how. So, we have to make a function that accepts arguments and that accept and that makes uh, like a variable out of the argument. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean by that. So we'll t we'll we'll show you a new type of function and it's uh, an argument function, right? So you get your function, you've got your name, and you've got your parentheses, right? And you got this, and you got execute some code. possibly return if there's a return type okay inside of here these parentheses we can say uh, we can have like a signaler right and we can then have like a parameter so we'll say param and we'll say the param is equal to a data type okay so what this signaler essentially is and what this data type is the signaler signals that this argument um, is the argument we want to use and the data type is the data type that this signaler accepts right and once you take in the data type um, it's assigned to this variable and you can use that variable within this code right maybe that doesn't make much sense you may be thinking that sounds a little bit crazy i don't really understand that that's fine, that's fine. So we'll make a function called multiply by three, right? And we'll make a signaler, not a singular, bloody hell, a signaler. <laughs> so we'll give it a signaler and we'll just call it sig, oops, sig one to mean signaler one. And we want a parameter and we'll just call that num. Yeah, we'll just call that num. And we want that to be of type integer, okay? We also want this to return an integer, right? And all we want this code to do is return num times free, all right? Quite simple, quite simple, okay? So, what can we use this with? Okay, so we've got our variable D that we're thinking of using this with. And we can say that variable D2 is now equal to multiply by three. And now we've got to use that word, the signaler, sig1. Then we use a colon, and after that colon, we use an integer, you know? So we're going to use the integer we're going to use is 
actually d because d is actually an integer okay a value 99 it's a variable that holds an integer of value 99 right quite simple quite simple stuff now we can print out d2 as well so what's happened here well I'll explain this signaler essentially this sig1 signaler says that we want to use this argument here this number is in here and then we get we take an integer as uh, as an argument here right as a parameter should i say right so this is our parameter so we're given the value 99 that value 99 is assigned to this here this parameter okay so here you can see it's num right so in this case num is 99 for d and we times that by three right i'll show you again i'll show you with a different sort of variable so we'll say d3 is multiply by three sig one d right now you might think well i could just get two variables here and multiply one by the other and keep multiplying by three that's that's absolutely fine oh, i'm not going to use d sorry i'm going to use five so we're going to multiply three by fly it should be 15. I'll just print that out there and just see what i mean what happened there sig one five. Oh, wrong uh, name i hit the b instead of the m there we go we got 15. now you might think all right well yeah i, I could just you know i could just get variable d4 equals three um equals three and then i could just put variable d5 equals d4 times six right which should be 18 and then we'll print out d5 and why did i even need this i've got this variable here okay genius i'll show you something um, that is harder to replicate that you can put in a function but you can't necessarily put in anything else. So we're going to just call the function complex math, right? And we're going to say that sig one, or we'll call it sig um, sig eleven, right? Just so that you see that I don't have to use the same name, right? And then we'll call this variable here num one, and we want it to be of type int. And we want this to return an integer. Okay. Now, this time, we're going to see say that variable a is equal to num1 times num1. Variable b is equal to a times 22. And variable c is equal to b minus num1 right then we return c okay sounds great so we're going to say that variable um e is equal to complex not complex complex math must make sure to get that right now we have to use sig 11 because that's our signaler for this uh, integer right and we're going to say that the integer is a value i don't know 32 sounds like a reasonable value to me and then we'll print out e hopefully there's no errors but seem to be having an erroneous day 22,496 right now in order for me to do you know all of these functions it's not going to be very easy i can't just simply put all of these into variables it's going to be a lot more complicated to replicate this than it is for example to replicate this multiply by three so you can see that when you've got an argument and a parameter that actually you can do some more complex things uh, than you could before right now then here you can see that we've got you know just one argument just one one uh, signal and one parameter for example right we don't have to use just one signal and parameter. So I'll show you how to use more than one, right? And so we use the func um, keyword, 
as per usual. Then we use the name and then we say signal one and then we'll say, I don't know, param one data type. And then we put a comma here and then we can use sig two and we can say param two and then we can use once again another data type right and then we can use sig x <laughs> param x is a data type okay so we can put as many arguments as we want in here well i mean we can't put as many but we can put quite a lot of arguments inside of here and essentially we can use more than one argument at a time so for example I'll give you a couple examples. I'll give you one, well, I'll just give you one simpler example and then one like multi data type example, right? So we'll say that function, I don't know, multiply to vars. Yeah, multiply to vars, we'll call it that. And we'll say sig1 is num1 of data type int, then we do a comma, then we say sig2 is num2, and we want it to be data type int, right? This is quite a simple one, quite a simple one. And we'll say that we want to, oh, sorry, I'm just going to have a return value there of uh, int, actually, just before I finish that off. And we're just going to return num1 times by num2, right? And we want to say that variable e1 is equal to multiply two vars, or two numbers, doesn't really matter. Now we use sig1, and sig1 will relate to number one, okay? Okay? And we'll say that we want that to be a value 5. And then we'll use sig2, which we want to be a value 10. And then we'll print that. And we should actually get uh, the value of 50 after this large number here. What? Oh, sorry. <sighs> colons, colons. I'm such a bad teacher. Such a bad teacher. There we are. So this should be a value 50. And you're thinking... Okay, that's not so hard. I can do that. You know, I can do that in my sleep. I, I can see where it's useful, but, you know, it's not that complicated. All right. I'll make something a bit more complicated. Also, so that you can understand the signalers a bit better, right? So, we can use, I don't know, let's say, cool, we'll call it cool phrase. Phrase. And you can actually use multiple data types. So we'll say sig1 num1 is equal to int sig2 num2 once again equal to int and then we'll say sig3 string1 and that's going to be equal to a string, right? And we want to actually have a return value string for this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that variable C equals num1 times by num2, right? And then we're going to say that variable b is equal to num1 is da -da -da, plus the string of num1 and then we're going to say we're going to we're going to let everyone know what the number 2 value is and we're going to say string num2 
the multiplication of these two is and we're going to put to string C right I hope this works <laughs> I hope it works and we're going to return B I know the variable names are a bit confusing but you know don't worry about that oh wait I don't sorry I don't need that actually let's let's add that let's add that yeah We'll add, yeah, we'll add string one actually. So string one. Right. So we return B. Now then, I'm going to use this function. We're going to call it cool phrase. Don't worry so much, you know, if this is hard for you, don't worry. You'll get used to it. Just bear with me and I'll explain it as well. So we'll put five. And we'll put sig two is eight. And then we'll put that sig three is Wow, that's cool. Oops. And we'll say that variable ddd is equal to cool phrase. Just going to check that that runs. Ah, yeah, hasn't run because of that. I just knew I'd have an error, you know, because the code's so big. There we go, that's run now. And we're actually going to print this ddd. This ddd there. Ah, uh, no. There we are. Sorry. I'm going to print that DDD. Sorry about that there. It's a bit unprofessional. But yeah, I'm going to print DDD. I'm going to run it. And you'll see here, num1 is 5. Haven't spaced that very well. <laughs> I'll just space it there. Sorry. So num1 is 5. I'll just rerun out and space it, yeah. So num1 is 5, num2 is 8, right? And the multiplication of these two is 40. Wow, that's cool. So you can see that I've used two different data types um, within three different, you know, signals and parameters. I've got a return type of string. And you can see that each sig, each sig shows, then, then like takes a, takes a value of a data type and then it assigns that value to a variable of the name of the param, right? So here, when I print out num1, we actually get five printed out. Uh, we get five printed out, which is the actual, you know, integer number we've used for the param, right? Here, num2, when we print out num2, we get eight, which is the integer number used for the param. And here for sig3, where we printed that out, which is which has been stored in string one we actually get the string of the param, right? So that's just a little breakdown of everything. This is a little bit complicated. You might have to look at it twice to get it. I'm sorry about the errors, by the way, but I just I just had to get on with it regardless of them. But yeah, have a little look at this, you know, in your own time, and you'll 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 understand it if you look at it a few times. But anyway, I'll go over everything again just so you can have a little understanding. So. Here I've just made an all function that's an int, and I've shown that basically when you don't have any arguments, you know, some of these functions can kind of be replicated. These return functions can just be replicated by finding out what the return value of the function is and just storing it in a variable. So some of these functions that just return something, they're useless because they have no argument. You know, once you find out the return value, you don't need the function, all you need is a variable that contains the return value, right? So a way to get past that is by using a signaler and a param that is of a data type. So essentially, we make a function and we decide we need a signaler and we need a data type. We can return that data type as well. And we can use this data type that's, that's um, attached to this sig and it will be held in this variable name. We can use this variable, this num variable, and do something with it. In this case, we're going to multiply it by three and return it, right? And you can see that with this simple function, really I can just use the vari assign the value three to a variable and times any any number by that to have the same effect. This is not the greatest function, right? 
but then I prove that this can be used for better things. So here, for example, we um, by use of the number one, this this here could be, for example, replicated. Just this one line. We could just get a variable and we could multiply it by itself and store it in a new variable. That's fine. But we couldn't then do all of these other things to it, you know, with this in, within the same line of code so easily. It would take us a lot longer to do all of this, right? And let's say this became a 1,000 line, uh, really complex maths function. It would be very hard for us to replicate that. So it's probably a lot easier for us to just use the function name and the arguments that we need in a function rather than to rewrite all of this, right? For most variables, for example, or for something that, you know, might be 10, 20 code. Here I show that you can use more than one signaler with more than one param for each one. And as you can see here, we can actually multiply one variable by another variable and it can be any variable, right? Of course, we could replicate this by just simply multiplying a variable by a variable. And it might be easier than actually writing the function. But, you know, if this function used these two variables for many things, once again, it would be a very useful function. Then here, this is a function that's quite complex, but it, all I've used this function for is to show that you can use multiple data types as params, as long as each data type um, is you know, connected to a SIG. So for example, I can't use SIG1 and use two data types, but I can use two different data types as individual SIG that I attach to variables that are attached to individual signalers, right? That's uh, pretty much it, and that's it working there. You know, you can see this weird complicating thing is working. Anyways, I hope that kind of cleared some things up. I hope that you can kind of see that there is value in functions, especially when you add parameters to them. And I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.